Yesterday, DHS announced the formation of the office had been put on hold. And this morning, Nina Jankowicz resubmitted her resignation. What was the experience of being the focal point of this sort of like massive frenzy like over the last few weeks? Well, it, it was really overwhelming, Chris. I mean, frankly, you know, I have prided myself over my career of being a really nuanced, uh, reasonable person. Again, as I said, I've I've briefed and advised both Republicans and Democrats. I admire some of the steps that the Trump administration even took to combat disinformation, including Senator Rob Portman and his bills against deep fakes and you know funding the Global Engagement Center at the State Department. So to say that I'm just a partisan actor was was wildly out of context. And then beyond that, it wasn't just just you know these mischaracterizations of of my work but it was death threats against my family over the last 3 weeks i have maybe had one or two days i didn't report a violent threat something like we're coming for you and your family you and your family should be sent to russia to be killed encouragement of me to commit suicide just casual death threats when it comes to someone who's looking to head aboard about disinformation that's all much we're in favor of it, apparently. So that's Nina Jankowitz who was talking about her experiences after this disinformation board that was proposed by the Biden administration has been put now on pause. As we went through all of this, also Peter Ducey questioned the new White House press secretary, Karine Jean Pierre, on this entire thing. And the irony of people that don't get what a misinformation board is and why they're not breaking up to make sure they have more of that. Let's watch that. A follow up to the disinformation board. Last week, you guys said that you needed this disinformation governance board at DHS to make sure that freedom of speech is protected across the country and that these platforms are not used for forms of disinformation. So, what changed? Look, the Department of, of Homeland Security, they began their statement report re repeating that the board had been intentionally mischaracterized, which is a little bit of what you were asking me. And they were explicit about what it does and doesn't, it does not do. Uh, it was never about censorship, pol policing speech, or removing content from anywhere. Its function was to keep Homeland Security officials aware of how bad actors, including human smugglers, uh, transnational cr criminal uh, organization, and foreign adversaries could use disinformation uh, to advance their goals. So if it's pausing because you think the board was mischaracterized, then the disinformation board is being shut down because of disinformation? Is that what's happening here? Look, I mean. Well, I guess it is being shut down because of the disinformation part. First of all, I, I mean, the board looked like it was quick, uh, 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 Francesca. It was quick to be put together and quick to be paused here. And now it looks a bit like the criticisms that were coming from people who were in favor of more uh, uh, disinformation can now dance and say, I told you, see how they conceded to us? They've admitted it. I mean, Look, I had questions about the disinformation board, but honestly, on the whole, I thought it was a good idea. I think it is important to understand just how many bots there are on the internet, on Twitter, just how much money there is being funneled into ad campaigns on Facebook to support this dictator or that dictator, including Trump, including here. Like all this stuff is good. It's an information gathering system and 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 place. Look, you've got you've got journalists doing the same work of being like, hey, did you know that fake news spreads 400 times faster than real news? And it's like that kind of stuff. So the government has been behind on all of this. This. Now, when they set up a board, suddenly the the one of the people who is part of it gets trolled like crazy. Which, to be honest with you, we could all see coming. Mm -hmm. And and then they're unable to sell it or at least stand by their own decision to create it. And it's just like typical Biden administration behavior. And so honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Peter Ducey's right. They're folding because of disinformation. It's the irony of all ironies, and it's so on brand for this like backboneless and spineless Democratic administration that really is caters to the right in a way that is fundamentally dangerous. And they show you every time. And then from seeing this, they're like, oh, great. We see that this our approach to doing this, completely slandering something that's happening, works because they're afraid of us. It also makes people leave the board as well. Really fast graphic number five, you guys, because Nina Jankowitz there on Tuesday night, she was pulled into an urgent call here to talk about this whole thing with DHS officials who gave her the choice to stay on potentially with this board, even as the department's work was put on hold because of this backlash.
And that's according to multiple people that were on that call. So the board could still be shut down pending a review from Homeland Security Advisory Council. But on Wednesday morning, Nina Jankowitz officially resigned from her role within that department because really, why? <laughs> why should I even be part of this anymore? Now, by the way, she did point out again that she's worked with both Republicans and Democrats as far as this. This is something that she does, but that doesn't matter when it comes to politicizing something and making sure that you want to shut it all down. Um, I guess when you've entrenched yourself with disinformation and you've convinced enough people, your voting block, that uh, fake news is actually real news. Mm -hmm. And then there's no pushback from that from the Democratic Party. I guess you win these battles. Disinformation wins. We'll see if anything changes. But I mean, if any Republican is up in office again, uh, I think they may implement something and say, you guys tried to do it too. And then what will Democrats do? You're right, I'm sorry. Okay.